Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and bienvenidos to Hispanic Hawaii. I'm Richard Concepcion hosting with Ana Jimenez McMillan. Today's program is about Miss Latina Hawaii. This organization provides leadership and mentorship to many young ladies within the community and also provide the opportunity for them to represent the Latin community. This program had two different segments. First, we're going to start with Miss Latina Hawaii 2019, Noel Baladat, and then we're going to have in part two, Miss Aloha Latina and Miss Paradise. Noel, bienvenida. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. All right, let's start the program by uh, asking you a quick questions, uh, reference about yourself, tell me about your family, and about your heritage. Well, I am 21 years old. I'm a senior at the University of Hawaii, majoring in piano performance and minoring in business. So I was going to double major, but now I'm majoring and minoring. And my family, my mom's side is all Japanese, and they live in Japan. And then my dad's side, we we're Filipino and Spanish. So that's how I got to join this Latin pageant. Wow, that's beautiful what it makes, right? <laughs> <laughs> that makes you so very beautiful, Noe Baladad. So you entered Miss Aloha Latina in 2017, and you won there. Uh, what made you decide to join that competition, um, or this one now, and what is different from a couple years ago till now? So I was only 19 when I won the title of Miss Paradise Latina uh, in 2017, but this year I was able to get the title of Miss Latina Hawaii, and between competing two years ago and competing this past month, I think that the main difference was that I was able to be more of myself and be true to who I am and what I believe in. Well, let's talk about your preparation. Tell me, you know, you had like two year break. <laughs> How do you keep yourself in a, you know, such a good shape? And uh, tell me everything that you was doing to maintain yourself in, in, in the shape, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, the two year break, um, it was kind of a break for me to kind of gather myself and try to figure out who I am and where I stand in this world and what I really want to do, the path in life I want to take. And so that has all helped me to become more true in this competition. This what about year. the gym? You didn't go to the gym and work out or anything? You change, it, <laughs> change the way you eat, nothing like uh, that? I go to the beach with my dog. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's perfect. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's just keeping up with current events as usual. Um, Speaking at different events in schools also kind of helped me prepare with the social impact statement of MICE, which is Music and Childhood Education, and also my talent. Um, that kind of was inspired by when I performed, or I was actually the rehearsal pianist for yeah, the. Let's talk about that talent, because I've seen some <laughs> picture of you in UH, you know, playing. Yeah. yeah I researched the internet. I know, I'm yes, tell us about your talent. <laughs> so um, I actually got the honor to play at Carnegie Hall twice. So once when I was 16 in high school and one this last year, uh, sorry, two years ago when I was 20 in college. And so the two years playing there was just incredible. It's an opportunity not many people older than me get to have. And so this past few weeks before the competition, I was actually the rehearsal practice pianist for the Hawaii Youth Symphony Orchestra, where I got to play my talent um, in full with the whole orchestra backing me up. And it was so incredible to be working with the young kids and the new director to be able to play through that glorious last movement of that concerto with the orchestra. And so that kind of inspired me to take a 90 second chunk out of the nine minute oh piece to perform at the Miss Latina Hawaii pageant. Wait, don't forget to send me an invitation the next time you want to perform. We'll be glad Definitely. To be <laughs> Tell us more then about your platform, your social impact on um, what you say is the music in childhood education. How did you decide to pick that? So music has always been a lifelong passion of mine. So I started piano when I was five. And when I moved over to the famed Ellen Masaki, in, when I was 11, she really kind of pushed me to pursue music as a career and as 
a future. And when she passed away in 2009, I kind of made it my own personal goal to continue her legacy um, by bringing beautiful music to everyone who enjoys it, but also to pass down everything I've learned from her and to keep her knowledge alive. And so right now, I'm a teacher at her school, the Masaki wow. School of Music, and I teach over 30 kids every week. Um, so I get to work with the kids, and so that kind of inspired me to start this social impact, MICE, which stands for Music and Childhood Education. And through this um, platform, Social Impact, I was able to actually reach out to a good friend of mine, Jake Shimabukuro, and we partnered together, and we also partnered with Music for Life Foundation, and we did a couple school visits last year. So we visited um, Kalihikai Elementary, Hokulani Elementary, and um, one more, I can't think off the top of my head, but we got to play. BCBC, <laughs> BC, right? <laughs> yeah, play for the kids. Um, we were also impressed with Jake's incredible ukulele playing, and we got to really talk to the kids about why music is so important in your development as a young child. Do you think the, the university, um, in general, the government should put more money into the school and university to implement more music into the child education? Definitely, definitely. So speaking to the Department of Education, actually, music programs and art programs are the first to go um, when they have budget cuts. That, that is true, because yeah. they just call everything. Um, music and arts are the first programs to go when we have budget cuts, and music programs are so important. Um, you know, we always say that physical education is like physically exercising your body, but music is like mentally exercising your brain, and that's why I really, really strongly suggest and push for music education in schools. So, Noe, so music therapy is a discipline that people actually go to yes. school for. Mm -hmm. So, and they uh, use it to help people with mental issues um, and other things. What have you noticed with the kids? There's 30 of them, which is a lot good for you. <laughs> what have you noticed in their development with this music uh, program platform you're doing? So, music in general really helps a child not only develop mentally with their cognitive skills, their behavioral skills, um, it's putting together the right and the left brain, w having them work together because, you know, your right side of your body works your left brain and your left side of your body works your right brain. So having those two sides work together really allows a child to become more open-minded, um, more well-rounded also. And it also teaches them discipline. You know, having the students practice a certain amount of minutes every single day, making sure all their homework assignments are done, and it's just really awesome to see all these kids not only be excited about music, but to actually really learn and grow and progress. And so it's really fun I can watching see that. Them. You get so excited talking <laughs> about this. So you're so I love very my close. Students. Yeah, yeah very great. close and near to your heart. But let's talk about the different categories when you go through the competition. Talk to me through those different categories. So the Miss America organization has changed. So it's now called the Miss America 2.0. And so there is a private interview still. And so instead of evening gown, you have an on-stage um, social impact statement where you walk in your evening gown and you, for like 10 short seconds, you say a statement that really represents what your social impact is all about. And so that was just 10 seconds of short fun. And then the other category is the on-stage interview. So this was usually actually in your evening gown, but now it's in your interview outfit, and they ask you just anything that comes up from your personal interview. And then there also is the big talent. Yeah, the talent portion. award. Yeah. yeah, so you won't win, right? <laughs> I did it. win the talent. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I was very honored to. You won the social impact talent. I also did win the social impact statement slash evening gown award. My goodness, <laughs> how do you do it? So you was nervous when you was uh, doing the interview on the stage? Do you remember the question? I actually do. You do? Um, the Kumuhula actually asked me the question, if you could be a grain of sand or a clam or a pearl, which uh -huh. would you choose and why? And so I actually chose the grain of sand because 
you, as a grain of sand, you know, you're still developing and trying to develop into that beautiful pearl, and you're still growing, although you've come so far to where you were and who you were. It's just all about being always growing to be a better version of who you were yesterday. That's true. You never stop at, at you never any stop stage growing. in your life. Yeah. Yes, it's always <laughs> continuing to grow. True. Exactly. So, out of all those different categories, uh, which one had the most challenge to you? And which one you like the most? Well, of course, talent was my favorite. Yeah, you won that one, right? I absolutely <laughs> love performing, being able to share my passion um, for my craft. And it's always such a fun thing to be able to share this side of me to different audiences because the classical world, music world, is a little limited. And so not many people get a chance to really hear it live. So it was really awesome trying to bring part of me to that different audience. And then I'd say the so, part, yeah, sorry, go the ahead. One, the one that you like the most was that one, but which one you had challenging? I think the most challenging one was definitely the interview. It's so hard for to really get yourself in nine and a half minutes to show the judges who you are, um, what makes you, why you are here, um, the different stories that you have. It's, a little difficult for me personally to <laughs> really be able to showcase all sides of me in nine and a half minutes. <laughs> so what is the difference between the one on a stage and the private one? So the private one is uh, 10 minutes, uh, nine and a half minutes of just questions being asked to you by the judges, getting to know you, and then 30 seconds of just closing. And then the onstage interview is actually a question from the judge who asked you the first question in the interview. Um, and it's really just a question that came upon from your personal interview. Wow, so we, we got some patients right here doing the interview. <laughs> so do you get really nervous or are you just looking at people at the stage and trying to figure out how you're going to answer the question? Or do you I rehearse a lot? I do rehearse a lot. I think it's because of my, of my experience as a, as a pianist uh -huh. and being able to perform in front of hundreds and thousands of people has really helped me to cut back on my nerves. But it still is a nerve-wracking <laughs> experience, you know, trying to answer such a difficult question in 30 seconds. So you have five seconds to think of it and then maybe 15 or 20 seconds to convey it to the audience. And it sounds like you're doing a wonderful job. Thank um, you. And nerves actually are good. They say sometimes if you don't have some nerves, that's where you might have some, you know, tr fluff up or whatever, mm -hmm. have some issues, but um, so it's good to have a little bit of nerves. <laughs> yes, definitely, for sure. So let, let's talk about any advice and recommendation that you're willing to give any young lady who's watching this program who maybe want to uh, be the next Miss Latina Hawaii or Miss Aloha or Miss Paradise. Well, definitely to be true to who you are. And I, I would definitely recommend this amazing program to any young girl out there. There is a teen um, program and there is the Miss program up to age 25, I believe. And it's an incredible organization that gives scholarships as well. So having run this past year and two years ago, and actually before I was able to garner that Miss Paradise Latina title, I won first, sec second runner-up and first runner-up. So being able to accumulate all those scholarships it is $10,000 a crown. So being able to gather about $35,000 in scholarship will really help me towards obtaining my future goal after I graduate with a master's in business administration at Argus University. Wow, that is so great. Well, I'm glad you're using it, taking it to good use. And Definitely. we're Thank you. very happy for you. Well, so what is, what is the future for you? What's next after this? So definitely after I graduate, I would love to get my master's in business administration. Um, ever since I started teaching at the school, I've been getting more involved in their events with the school. And so we actually just had our big Christmas program that I was able to direct. Um, so direct. it was over 120 wow. piano kids that I got to kind of direct and manage all the rehearsals and then the string kids. So it was a total of over 150 students in oh, our awesome. Christmas program. And the house was full, and it was just managing not only the rehearsals, but conducting the kids, um, getting the kids to play together, um, even organizing the stage, stagehand. 
A stagehand slash conductor. That's a, lot of work. That's a lot of work, my goodness. Well, it sounds like you have some information to put in your essay when you apply for your MBA. Very good. <laughs> well, uh, are you going to participate on the Miss Hawaii this year? Yes, so all three titles, the Miss Latina Hawaii, Miss Aloha Latina, and Miss Paradise Latina, will go straight to the Miss Hawaii America. Um, competition. There is no date yet, but it will be sometime in it's June. Coming up. <laughs> yeah, sometime next year in June, at the the beautiful historic Hawaii Theater in downtown. And so, the winner of that competition, the Miss Hawaii, will go straight to Miss America. So that's in that's in that's a big competition. That's a, that's a lot of work. You got to prepare <laughs> for all these, and it's coming yeah. up. How are you nervous still, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's just nonstop. It's always just trying to be, you know, a better version of who you were yesterday, and it's never ending. Okay, we're about to go into break. Any final thoughts? Well, no, just thank you for having me, and it's been so awesome trying, being able to speak about my social impact, mice, and really getting to tell people how important music is, and being able to talk story with you about what I really love <laughs> to do. So thank you so much for having me. All right, thank you so much for coming. So we are about to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to have Miss Aloha Hawaii and Miss Paradise uh, Latina. Um, so don't go away. Stay with us. Hawaii. の日本語放送のコスト国末ゆかりです。各週月曜日の2時からお届けしています。日本語コミュニティハワイの日本語コミュニティに便利なお助け情報、ニュースなどをゲストをお招きしてお届けする番組です。こんにちはハワイ。各
So I'm, I'm thankful for that. But I'd have to say the most challenging part was the onstage interview because you're so limited on time and you just have to think in the moment what you want to answer and how you're going to say it really matters too. So tell us, uh, Ms. Aloha, about your platform. My social platform is called Enough is Enough which is based on helping children living in domestic violent homes. And the reason why I chose to do that is because I myself lived through that environment and I've grown so much from it and to even call myself a title holder is just an honor. So what I'm trying to do is to bring awareness to children and parents and give them hope that life will get better. And your platform? My platform is called In Depth, which stands for Depression Education for Parents and Teen Health. I started, or I was inspired because I personally experienced depression, and it's so common in high school. Like, I've seen it happen to a lot of my peers, so I thought that we should really speak up about it, even though there's a stigma on it. So how are you going to implement that plan to help you know, people to cope with depression. Is there any specific way that you're going to try to help the community we you platform? Yes. So right now, I've started an active mind chapter at my high school, which solely is for educating the rest of the school about teen depression, symptoms, available resources, or ways that they can overcome it on their own. and using the peers to really feel more comfortable and open about it. Um, I'd also, well, I'm working on starting the chapter at other high schools as well, and I plan on doing public talks through the library system. And what about the parents? How can the parents uh, identify if the teenagers is going to depression? As of right now, I have platforms on Facebook and Instagram because I know a lot of parents use social media. Yeah, we all do. Yes. I, no, I do too. <laughs> um, for now, I have to plan more how I'm going to reach out more to the parents directly. Oh, Miss Aloha Latina, let's talk about more about domestic violence. Um, domestic violence show in many different forms. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes we're not aware they could be uh, financially, mm -hmm. uh, how are you going to uh, implement this uh, domestic violence awareness within the community? So first off, I would go to elementary schools or any schools and bring together volunteers or anyone who would like to give back to the community and we would go together and form groups of children who have been directly affected by domestic violence, either emotionally, mentally, financially or physically. And we're just going to try and do hands-on activities. So by reaching the age range, it would mostly be fun activities for them to get their minds off of it, to kind of distract them from reality. And the second thing I would do would be making brochures, giving information on what it is about and how we as a community could come together to prevent this and stop this and help the children in any way we can. I think these are very... Um very worldwide, worthwhile uh, pursuits, mm -hmm. and they're very delicate subjects, actually, the social impact they affect and public health-wise. So I'm glad that you're taking these on. Um, not personally, I've been a former therapist with children. So um, what's your in t um, take on what you've seen so far with children and any experience you may have heard them say about depression? I actually hear a lot of adults try to cancel out how they feel so that makes them feel like they can't share how they feel because they're weak or they're supposed to be stronger. They, I don't know what it is with not having emotions, but a lot of students feel like they shouldn't have to show their emotions. That's significant that yes. you saw that and that they've shared that with you. And same thing with Miss Aloha. Uh, domestic violence has many different forms, right? Absolutely. It's not just physical, it's the verbal um, and also uh, restrictions, so mm -hmm. to speak. So what's um, some things that you've noticed or changes? 
I've noticed that as children living through those times, they don't really understand that it's happening because as a child, you're still growing up, still trying to understand what the world is. So most people would not really recognize it because a child cannot really have their own voice to pretty much opinionize it. So it's pretty difficult to really reach out and see if they're actually going through it. I want to ask you reference about uh, more in detail about your talent. So what song do you sing during the competition? I sing Vivir Mi Vida by Mark Anthony. Mark Anthony, yeah. that's your favorite singer? I would say he would be one of my favorite singers. His, him as a vocalist is very inspiring to me. I really love the way he sings. But I changed it up um, to a more acoustic, very slow version, which is performed by Jennifer Lopez. So it was very interesting to see her make uh, acoustic version of her late husband, her ex-husband's song, which is very interesting to me. It's beautiful. What about you? I see you playing, you was playing the guitar, yes, right? Yes, I did. And I who, sang and, and I played. Who painted the color art? You just <laughs> painted yourself? Um, it's actually a friend of mine. Oh, so, perfect. Yeah. I thought it would bring a lot of character to my presentation. So tell me more about what you were singing. I sang The Climb by Miley Cyrus, mm -hmm. just because I thought that it really related back to my social impact. And when teens or people in general, when they experience depression, they often lean towards music. So you won an award to, uh, for social media? Yes, yeah? I did. Tell me more, how do you do that? I just have the best Not support group. <laughs> and connect to people. Yes. <laughs> what about you award? I believe I was awarded the Miss Popular yeah. Award. Yeah. Yes, it was due to me selling over 70 tickets when the minimum was to sell around 25. So I just thank my friends and family for buying all the tickets and just supporting me. So that was a really big help. Great. Uh, I want to know what is your future plans, you know, because after this, you, I know you got to continue uh, working in your platform. And uh, we invited you to come back to the program maybe six months, seven months from now to see where you are with mm -hmm. your platform. But I want to know more about what are you planning in the future uh, after Miss Aloha and Miss Paradise? Anyone? <laughs> well, after this, if I do miss win Miss Hawaii, I would go straight onto the Miss America organization. But if I don't, I will go straight into the United States Air Force. And while being enlisted in there, I would like to achieve to get my RN degree. So that's my future career. That's my dream career. Miss Paradise. Of course, I'll be competing for Miss Hawaii as well. Educational wise, I am planning on going to Northern Idaho College to play softball and complete my prereqs and eventually transfer to Colorado State to finish my bachelor's in neuroscience. All right, we very short on time. Uh, any final thoughts, any um, recommendation to any young lady that is watching the program? Um, Ms. Aloha? I would just like to tell everyone to just try your best, honestly, and be yourself and never doubt yourself because when you do, that's when you limit yourself to opportunities. Me, myself, I really never thought running in a pageant, let alone my first time running in a pageant, that I won an award or I won a title, and it's just very shocking to me. I agree with Tani. Um, we really grew not only as pageant sisters, but as individuals. So before this, I'm really bad at public speaking. I was shy. I wouldn't have sang in front of so many people, although I love to sing. I would just say, follow your dreams, because I've always wanted to be in a pageant when I, since I was younger. And now I'm living my dreams, so. That's perfect, great, it's wonderful. Uh, Anna? Yes, um, I think you guys did a wonderful job. And you each won, no, all three won award within the pageant of itself too. So we know you put your best foot forward and we also want to say good luck to all three of you to who one of them wins Miss Hawaii. Thank, thank you. you. Well, we want to say you an inspiration. I want to say thank you so much for coming to the program. Don't forget you can return and we can talk about more about your platform in the future. Of course. Uh, thank you for having us. <laughs> no, thank you so much. Well, we want to say thank you for watching Think Tech Hispanic Hawaii. And don't forget, you can watch many other programs within thinktechhawaii.com. Thank you. Aloha y gracias.